uh, the previous uh, topics, which is in partial derivative. Uh, in particular, uh, a typical question is finding the tangent plane. Okay? So if you have this, this is more likely to be uh, direct questions, it's straightforward questions. You have a function and you have a point and you need to find the tangent plane on that uh, function. The functions within the, the uh, chapter 14, you need to know that the function is now we call a surface, the surface function. It can be two variable, it can be three variable. But now let's focus on uh, this uh, function, which I think for ta this tangent plane, uh, this will be a function of two variables. Okay. So for example, if we start by looking at maybe number three, the, the, the simplest part, the simplest uh, questions or simplest functions that we can see. So remember that the tangent plane that is z, we can write and then partial of x and then x minus x zero and then plus partial y, y minus y zero. Okay, check your meter. Okay, now suppose that the z is is this function, then we could find the partial y for each, uh, partial for each x and y. And then we know that the point is already mentioned in the questions. So point is one to negative four. So we put that x and y. So we put x equal one, or let me write here, x equal one, this is y equal two. Or sometimes if the functions, it has two variables, then you need to, to put all the points that is in the, in, the, in the result of the derivative, right? So put everything, this is four, this is minus one, right? Okay, and z, z zero here is the, this is the zero, or so we can put everything inside. So z minus or minus minus four is become plus equal four, and then x minus one plus or now it's become negative negative uh, y minus two, and basically that is the tangent plane. And you can <coughs> perhaps if you want to write in more clean, um, you can write. Like that, minus four plus two minus two minus six, right? Okay, so we get the uh, tangent plane. You will see later when we deal with the uh, more advanced techniques. There are there are several ways to find the tangent plane. This is one of them, and basically what you need to do is you need to find the partial x and partial y. This is particularly uh, will works on the function of two variables for a function of two variables. Okay. And if you see the structure, this is similar to when you, when you are uh, applying calculus to find the tangent line. Okay. Very similar. The difference is we have two tangent, two tangents, right? The partial x and partial y. Okay. So this is number three. Maybe number nine. Okay, maybe number nine. And I hope all these categorical functions, um, like when you did a derivative in calculus one. Um, the power rule, uh, the exponential, the logarithm, um, trigonometry, uh, quotient rule, and so on. I hope you are familiar because I think in the midterm, um, I think some of you not getting the product rule correctly. So yeah, I hope 
I hope you are going to be more familiar because everything in, in Tacos 1 will be taking over without any specific review. Sometimes maybe we can review, but most of the time we don't have really much time. So, so for the, some specific techniques that is on Calculus 1, I hope you are familiar with that, okay? Okay, let's try num number nine. Okay, so this, if you see, we have X and we have sine with something inside. So it's of two functions inside one big functions, right? So this is also a product rule. So we can think this like a, an F and G. And basically, if you remember the product rule, this will be F prime G plus G prime F, right? Okay. So we could start taking, for example, if we take the partial X, when we're taking partial X, Two, these two functions, they both have x, right? So we need to make this as a product rule. So this will be uh, x, and then it stays x and cos. And the chain rule, chain rule because it's only x, it's one, so nothing really matter. And then plus, sine x plus y, okay? Because the x is one, right? We derive x, okay? Okay, your meter, you can take your meter there, okay, and check. Okay, now taking the partial y, the partial y, it works on only for uh, the second functions, right? The sine functions. So we could directly derive that sine and becomes cosine. And x, we treat as a constant, so just we leave as it is, right? So this will be x cosine x plus y. Chain rule still one, so nothing, nothing really happened. So this is the partial x, partial y, okay? This is something that you need to familiarize. So if you get it wrong, then the follow-up will be wrong as well. Okay. Okay, and then we take this uh, point. So we are going to plug in the um, negative one, one. This one is negative one, one as well. So this will be equal to, so we put um, x negative one, so cosine zero is one, one multiplied with negative one, so negative one, and sine zero is zero, right, so negative one. And this will be zero, so one, so negative one as well, right? So both are negative one, and we can put the tangent plane uh, formulation. So z is at zero, so I will just write z as that formulation. So this is partial x is negative one, and then x minus minus one, so plus one, negative one, or let me just write negative, y minus one. So z minus x minus y minus one plus one, so zero. So yeah, this is the tangent plane. Okay. I think if you want, you can try the other <coughs> function as well. Try to find the tangent plane.
Okay. I think if, we, if I have more questions about tangent plane, I will put below, but I think uh, uh, maybe later. Okay. So let's uh, move to another review on uh, another topic. So after the tangent plane, we have the, the chain rule, right? So let's go to the chain rule. This is your class notes, uh, last discussions. Also this one, also the same. And this will be the uh, example. Maybe let's start with maybe taking taking from number three to eight. Okay. Any idea which which one we need to solve? <coughs> so chain rule. Maybe taking number three first. Okay, number three first. Is to have uh, a simple equations first. Okay. So let's say number three. Let me rewrite here. Z is x y cube minus x squared y, and then we have x is t squared plus one, y is t squared minus one. Based on the information given, okay. what we need to find is uh, DZDT, right? DZDT from the questions. So we need to find DZDT. So we could start every time you need to confirm, you can always draw the tree diagram just to help you out uh, to define which one is the variable and how much variables we have and whether it's branching or not. We can start from Z taking into X and Y based on the function itself. And then both x and y are function of t. Okay, so we have this uh, diagram, right? And from this diagram, basically, we would like to. So all paths are going to be taken, right? So we are going to to write all the path. So t z d t is its branches. So we take the Leibniz notations. So that's what we have. So basically, we are going to, to, to multiply for each one of the uh, partials and derivative. We can start taking this. So dx dt is 2t, dy dt is also 2t. And maybe let me put this a little bit here. And maybe taking the dz dx. Okay, remember x variable, then y is a constant. So we focus on x. So this is y cubed minus 2xy for x. And doing similar derivatives. Three x y squared minus x squared, and basically we just multiply all together. This is two t, and this will be three x y squared minus x squared, or we can factorize and write. Right, everything. Okay. And that's it.
And you can check other questions as well. And notice that the challenges or difficulty within this chain rule is basically understanding the function itself, how to differentiate the basic function, and then uh, combine with all the uh, chain rule possibilities within the question. OK, maybe another part of the question that is, I think, uh, quite typical is like a number 70, okay, this one. Maybe this is interesting. So you have a, a function P, which is basically branches into G and H. And both G and H, they are uh, single variable uh, with variable P. Okay, let, let's say we, we take the, this number 17 here. And basically, we have everything um, given. G of G prime of two, H of two, H prime of two, the partial at some point, partial at some point, and you can find the P prime of two. It seems complicated if you are maybe uh, lost your way how to how to identify. But basically this works well with the chain rule diagram. So you can start by taking the diagram, taking the three diagrams, and taking the definition from from, I think from the P branches, and then having, I think similar with this, with, I think Z is P, and I think the similar, and then we can take it into um, defi definition for each partial. Okay. So suppose that we have um, P, and maybe to make it easier, maybe to make it easier, let the x is g of t because this is basically because it's already stated that partial x has a number partial y also has a number s and y will be refers to the uh, first equation so let 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 let's just write this as our definition to help okay so the p will be a function of x, y, right? The, sa the same thing, okay? So we could write p, and this will be t, okay? Well, if you name with g or h, this oh, it is still okay, but I would like to start with something familiar in our uh, discussion before. So we can say the dp dt is the x the uh, sorry the p the x dx dt plus the p the y dy dt. Okay we start from here and look at the number we know half at t equal to okay so at t equal to x become g of 2 which is 4 and the x prime g prime of 2 is negative 3 and y is h of 2 which is 5 and y prime is h prime of 2 it's 6 it basically i just write all the information in the, in the given so this basically the p prime of 2 basically is equal So when we put t equal to x is 4, y is 5, right? 4, 5. So 4, 5, the point itself, already made into this uh, obvious partial. So partial x at 4, 5 is 2. So this partial x at 
or phi, which means at t equal to two, the same thing in parameter. We could then change everything. This is four five. And then uh, uh, x prime or dx dt. Or maybe let me write to just to give you clear what is the partial. So partial is basically. And partial, or maybe maybe let me uh, let me make clear all the components. So this is four five is two, and partial y. x, y, <coughs> partial y is 8. <coughs> so I think I will rewrite the dx dt as the g prime. So let me just write with this g prime of 2 plus partial y h prime of 2. And then just change everything. So 2 multiply with negative 3 plus 8 and 6. <coughs> so 48 minus 6. So 42. Okay, any questions? I, I, I bet you are still confused about this. <laughs> okay. So you need to be able to identify which one is the partials and how the function will be branches. And you need to define um, which one is partials, which one is single variable. As long as you can do that, no matter how the question will be, you will get the correct answer. But if you still cannot do that, you still maybe rely on the, your notes every time, uh, I don't think you are going to be able to understand. That will be pretty difficult. Okay, so my, my, my suggestions. All these simple questions you need to be able to tackle off. All these uh, other questions, as, uh, like this chain rule here, over here. Then you have something like this. From z, you have x, y, and then from x, you have x, t, u. So two, three branch. So two, three, three. So it's become six variations or, or six paths. So first, you need to be able to do that. Maybe if, you, if you're not able to differentiate one by one, at least you try to draw the tree diagram. Okay? Draw the tree diagram first. If you do that and you are correct, at least you get 20% of it. 20%. If you could differentiate with some techniques from half plus one, you get another 
and you combine everything, and then you get these all um, answers. Okay. okay, so if you still have a hard time in half plus one, I cannot help you. I'm sorry. That is because that, that is pretty much the basic thing. Okay, anyway, uh, let's try another question that I prepare. Uh, okay. Okay, this is interesting. I took it from other, <coughs> other exams from other universities. Let's start from number one here. So this is, compared to the previous one, is more difficult. So let me, let me try to help you, to under, at least to understand first. Okay? Not to be able to like, solve this, but help you to understand what this is about. Okay? So you have defined z as a function of two variables, x, y. And each x and y is also a function of two variables. You have x, t. Okay? Now you can draw the tree diagram first. Right? And you can, I, I, I think you can do that, right? You can do that. Based on the function you have here, you can try to draw z, x, y, x, and then from x and y you have um, s, d, s, d, s, you have four branches at the ground, right? So I think maybe start doing that first. Or maybe giving you some time to, to try, try this first. And maybe let me wait for a couple minutes. But I hope you are really trying. Like, I, I give you a couple minutes to, to think and try. Okay, this is actually pretty, it's actually similar, similar process with the previous um, examples that I gave you. So we could start with defining the variables. Okay. So defining variables, z, right? And then x, y, and from x, we have these two. Right, okay. And then perhaps we could start with defining the partial for x and partial for y from z, right? So maybe we could start from there and then take the square and then look at the forms, what kind of forms that we have. Okay. Or instead of taking from dz or uh, do z, do x, or do z, do y, I think it's better to look at the endpoints of the diagram. Okay? It's either s or t, right? So you could have either do z, do s, or do z, do t as your path, right? So for do z, do s, you will start from do z, do x, and then the x, or do x, do x. And then you'll be the y, y or x. That's what it means. You get it? Those you t, you can get from here to z, x, and t. Z, y, and t. That's what it means. Right? So we can just write and then put over everything. So this. Oh, this is not single variable, sorry, sorry. Supposed to be Leibniz. Although in computation, this not really matter, but 
in in math we need to follow the rules oh y dt it should be s And perhaps let's let's carry on. And since we only have a definite function on x and y, let, let, let's start with x and y and change all this dy, ds, dx, 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 dt, dy, dt. Okay, let's do that. So let me write here. Um, maybe let me write here. dx, ds is just one okay and or maybe let me maybe let me let me write on the right side to make it clear so let's say x is s plus t dx ds is one dx dt also one right and then here is y s minus t dy oh sorry it's supposed to be not d i forgot the labels okay let's this is negative 1 right for the last one okay change everything from this um, the partial with respect to s and t change to the substitute back to the our equation on the left for example one go here right one go there right and the same thing with the second part so this will be do z do x plus do z do y and here is one but the second one is negative one so this should be minus okay So this could be, uh, you, could, you could say this is a plus b, a minus b, and if you multiply, it will be a squared minus b squared, okay? So, look at right. It's equal. Squared minus. And then done. Similar structures. So this shift, this square will be negative one. Okay. Hey. Okay. Interesting question, right? Like it's not, like it's not makes your. Uh, so the question is, it doesn't doesn't make you write really much calculations, but you need to think, and that's I think smart question.
Okay, how about if we start the second one here? If you want, if you want to try. This is about the implicit, uh, implicit method. In the second one, at least the implicit, there are at least two ways to solve it. First is using diagram, and then when you see the implicit, you have Z, right? You have Z, so Z, Z. So you can make this as a function. So maybe you can, if you want to make maybe another variable, then it's okay. But you can just say maybe f, f, x, y, z, and taking all this and maybe put this to the left side of that a function. You can define it as a function. Make the diagram like we did in implicit class, and then you can have your do uh, do x, which is if you want to take the direct approach, this will be negative partial. For, from the x, from here, partial x, uh, partial z, right? Or you could directly, uh, directly take all this into implicit. Okay? And by implicit, we need to focus on what we are achieving. So we need to derive with respect to x. So we derive the x. Y will be a constant. And every time we see z, z will be the z of x. Just like you did in calculus one. You can directly do that or take the, the direct approach. So if you take direct approach, we can take this as uh, taking a function that's defined from, from the information given and taking this x y z okay and suppose that this function equal a constant okay to to make the uh, uh, calculations um, worse so those are the x at x y equal 0 1 this will be equal negative partial x partial z and then the point x y z is 0 1 and z is 1 right from here this is also the same Or you can write directly taking the Okay, let's take a break for a while.
Okay, so here, uh, just to make a reminder how we get this, okay. we can start from uh, this F and then X, Y, Z, and Z is another branch X, Y. We could state from taking the do F, do X, which is going to be zero since uh, our definition of f is taking equal a constant or zero now so taking this do f do x plus do f do z do z do x okay and the other part uh, i will not take that because we focus on x only right and this will be equal to zero and that's why This is how we get to this, okay? Sometimes this way may be simple, sometimes it's not. Sometimes maybe this way perhaps better, and I think both are okay, and I think it's up to you. You can directly derive implicitly. Okay, you can you can use implicit uh, directly. So taking y as a constant, and every time you see z, you will get the do z do x as a chain rule, and x treat that as a function, we also a function and product rule, the forget the product rule, and here don't forget the chain rule from x and z. Which means that I think inside the chain rule there will be a product rule for x and y. Oh, you get it. I I I will skip this. Okay. Okay. I hope you can try this. Just put in the partial uh, formulation and the numbers, and you get the uh, do z do x. Okay. Okay, move on to the next part. Okay. Okay. This is directional derivative. We have learned this last time. Up until here, which if we have the maximize, how to maximize is Basically, uh, when we have the angle is, is zero, or which means that the vector u is having the same direction with the gradient vector f. Okay, now let's start another topic. This is still still in the directional derivative part. So let's let's start to look at the tangent plane to level surface. Okay, so suppose that we have some S as a surface. So surface S is having a function, three variables, equal some constant K. Now this is a, if you, if you remember, this is what we call the level surface. And depends on what constant it will be uh, the value will uh, define the contour, okay, if you remember uh, the maps. Okay, this is uh, obviously pretty similar. Okay, and then let the P, which is at a certain point, be a point on the surface S. And then let curve C lies on s okay as you can see from the picture you have we can see the curve c and then we can rewrite the curve so curve c we can rewrite in terms of a factor position or vector function so we can write
as a vector. And let the t0 be a parameter value. So that the r of t0 will be our point at the uh, p. So since the curve, so since curve C lies on S, then the F should satisfy this level surface. If x, y, z, differentiable function of t, and f also differentiable. Now we can rewrite using the chain rule. So basically taking the all the up, up differentiate with respect to t. So taking the this f, let me copy. So taking the partially with respect to t. So this will be dou f, dou x, dx, dt. And you will see that this formulation is much more generalized and it can work for every function in this chapter. This is equal to zero. And we can rewrite this basically since we know the gradient factor or the, the del f this is basically that, or this is actually the same thing as that. Right? And the dx dt, dy dt, and dz dt are basically the first derivative of the vector functions, right? So basically, the form, the chain rule formula, we can write in terms of the del and the r prime in the dot product. So del f, so this could go there, dot the r prime t, this equals zero. In particular, at the, at t equal t0, we have r t0, which is the point x0, y0, and z0. Then our formulations become the del f at this point dot the r prime of t0, which is equal to 0. So what could be, what, what could be um, our conclusion from this dot product? Okay? So this is the dot product, right? So dot product, if you remember, this is start from, so if we take the a as a vector a, if this is zero, means that if we have a, let's say, over there, 
and we have B over there. This angle, okay, so the basis for the dot product is using the projections, right? The projections of the cosine. How to get the cosine is we get from here. So we have two components, sine and cosine. So we get the multiplication for cosine from here, right? And then when it's zero, it means that the angle is pi over two, okay, perpendicular. So from the dot product conclusion R, the del F is perpendicular to tangent vector R prime T zero. So we can define here, okay. so if, let me write maybe, go here, so if the del F is not zero, It is defined, or maybe let, me, let me rephrase the words. We can define the Tangent plane to the level surface. F equal K at some point P as the plane that pass that passing. Uh, P and has normal vector delta F, del F. Okay. And using the standard equation of the plane, now we can write this as this formulations. And this formula is stated, uh, it's more general uh, formulations. And it works for uh, everything, I think. Or maybe to make it clear, this is actually from so the del f dot the vector 
you can imagine the vector is r minus r0. So that's how you get the x minus x0 for this r, y minus y for Let me give you some notes how we could see this. So normal line is the del F. This is the normal line. And also the equations could be in terms of the symmetric equations like this number 20 here this is what we call the symmetric equations Now, uh, another notes. This is maybe later. Maybe smaller. Let me move. Uh, now, how if the functions or let me write here. What if the surface is in the form of two variables. So z equal function of x, y. So if we have this, then we could define the f, the capital F, as perhaps the z. It's, it's supposed to be z minus uh, z0 or here is f x y minus z okay so the del f this becomes partial x partial y and negative one okay now the tangent plane using this the the, the, the new formulations is become partial x partial y and minus which is the, the the tangent plane that we have before right so this if we take this and make it the same approach the same thing right so tangent plane tangent plane So it turns out that using this del structure, the del dot the r or del dot the uh, r minus r zero, is more generalized. It works for every function. When you have the function of two variables, you just take the, all the uh, functions, the capital F, as the difference between this f, x, y, and minus z, which means that from the del f, we get partial x for the x-axis, partial y, and this last one, nothing here, is only z, so e will be negative one. So put everything inside the these equations, and then we get the same equation that we did in previous chapter or previous topics. So you don't need to memorize everything. With this, with this, you can get every formula. Mm. 
you saw that you did this, right? But it turns out that this is actually from the more more generalized <laughs> version of the formula. Okay, just one small note on the gradient vector. So this is just, a, I think, a conclusion uh, property. So gradient vector or the del f, suppose the f is differentiable and the del f is not equal to zero. So the dark filter fit actually can derive from the previous part. So del f dot u, right? U is the unit vector. And then the del f, it will be maximum. We have the maximum rate if the uh, if it is the using the magnitude on the on, on the delta f. And delta f will be perpendicular to the level curve or level surface of f through x. This is a conclusion from the, the, the dot product, the dot product that we have. If the dot product is equal to zero, it means that the angle is perpendicular. That's right. some conclusions from all the uh, notes here. Maybe just a showing you um, practical approach. Okay, maybe just a few example here. And if you have time, we can have uh, some more exercise, but I don't think we have time. So let's just take some examples. This is actually an example from the books, which is very simple. Okay. So now we have a function of three variables. This is what we call the ellipsoid. Ellipsoid means we have a quadratic structure for x, y, z. And then the is a, a fraction. This fraction. And suppose that we have a, b, c on the bottom. The A, B, C, is, they are not equal. If it's equal, it would be a sphere, right? It's a sphere. But if it's different for each part, then it will be, maybe one will be taking a little bit longer, the other one will be short, like a, a ball for American football. Right? So we call it ellipsoid. Okay, to find the, the tangent plane and a normal line, so basically we need to first taking this into the del, uh, finding the del okay. of these functions, or maybe taking uh, taking this as a level curve. Maybe suppose f, we name it as this functions here. Suppose this is our f, we can directly taking the del, uh, del f, maybe taking this first partial x partial y partial z so this will be um, x over 2 2 y and then 2 over 9 z so that's the del f and let's plug in the point negative 2 1 negative 3 
this will be a negative one, uh, two, and then this will be a negative three, neg negative two over three. <coughs> and basically, since we have the point, we have the del f, so we can write all in this structure, so the tangent plane. Maybe let me write the formulations. Okay, and then we can write negative one, um, x minus or plus two, uh, plus two, oh, wait, wait, uh, one, or oh, y minus one. Minus 2 over 3, z plus 3. If you want to stop here, it's okay. If it is, if it is in the exam, I will give you a full point if you just write like that. It's, it's just already full point. Okay? So no worry about taking your time, simplify the process. I already take that as a full point. If you want to know the symmetric equations, you can write as x plus 2 over negative 1, basically just taking all the forms, <coughs> and basically it's the same as in the tangent line, if you remember. Okay, so that's it. And another example here, which I think also quite um, simple. So we have the tangent plane to the surface. So find the tangent plane to the surface. So the surface is this, point R113. Okay, so we start from the taking f, and then we can directly write del f. <coughs> so 4x, 2y minus 1. And taking the point, 1, 1, 3, or maybe taking all at 1, 1, 3. Four, two, negative one. And basically four x minus one plus two y minus one plus or minus minus one z minus three equals zero. And that's it. Okay. Okay, maybe having just a quick exercise here, just maybe one example from here. Uh, maybe this one, because we're still in the tangent plane. So the question is asking the tangent plane and the normal line. The normal line, you can actually using these symmetric equations. Okay? You, can, you can use symmetric equations. To find to to uh, to visualize the the normal line. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, perhaps let's say number 50. So we start by taking the capital F. Suppose this is a our functions. Okay. And taking the del F. I will write directly in one line. So partial x will be y uh, plus z, part a partial x, partial y will be x plus z, partial z will be y plus x, okay? And then taking the uh, one, two, one. So 2 plus 1 is 3, 1 plus 1 is 2, uh, 1 plus 2 is 3. <coughs> so this is a the normal vector, right, for the del f. So the equation of tangent plane will be 3 x minus 1 plus 2, y minus 2 plus 3, z minus 1 equals 0. And done. Okay. So this is the part A. Part B is normal line is has directions. Actually, direction of our del f, so we can say this is three, two, three. So we can say the parametric. Okay, so parametric will be one plus three t. So this is. Remember the point. Point is one two one. Okay. So parametric will be 1 plus 3t, y will be 2 plus 2t, and z will be 1 plus 3t. Okay, I think some confusion, right? So 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, and this is the direction, basically, the direction vector for the normal vector. This will be this three, two, three. Okay. So we are writing the using the R, okay. or in in terms of P. Now this is a, a, another parametric. Or we could also write in terms of symmetric equations. Okay, it's simple, right? Simple. So I hope you, you get the idea on the procedure, finding the del f, and then using the del as a all the partials will be the uh, taking into this tangent plane equation, and this is basically the the vector positions in R. So we take the R minus R zero. Or we can split, taking the dot product with each axis, x minus the point, y minus the point, z minus the point. The more you try, it will be very, uh, I think, very practical. You could get done for all tangent plane problems using this 
uh, equation. So basically, for function of three variables, this will be very direct approach. For a function of two variables, you can still use this, or you can just write with the previous formulation, which is very, I think, uh, you can you can get the same formula from from here. Maybe before ended, maybe one more, but maybe I'm not going to solve completely. How about this, number 49? It's simple, but I would like to know how you did it. And I, I think some of you still not getting used to the partial drift. So I would like to know how much you didn't know, okay? So let's say 49. Suppose the F, let me just help you here. Okay. I would like to know how you could get the partial X, partial Y, partial Z from the F. So basically, taking partial with this function of three variables, basically taking each one of them as partial x, partial y, partial z. So what should we do? We take the partial with respect to x only, okay? So for the partial x, focus on x. You see the question, the, in the question is on the x, y squared, z cube. So x become one. Okay, so this will be got it. Okay. Okay. Now <coughs> second part. Focus on y. 
y squared, so we have 2xyz cubed. Okay? And then this z, partial z, 3xy squared z squared. Okay? So why we could do directly like that, compared with the chain rule, we, we need to draw the, like this three diagram, and then we need to state which one is which. Because here, we are dealing with the parametric of T. So that's why I could do this directly the X on the X, on the Y, this on the Z. Because basically we are deriving with respect to T. That's why. Okay, remember that? Okay. This partial means not respect to x, y, z, but with parameter. parameter. This is the, that's why we can have the parameter equation. Okay. And you can, I think, solve for the final solutions. Anyway, anyway.